Hey boys and girls, it has been a while since I've done any uploads. I do something actually productive. I've had a few requests for stuff about heating calls, and this is not a troubleshooting call, but I thought I would give out some good basic information. Uh, this is good for homeowner or or technician, new technician. You're just looking for some information if you haven't gone over this in class or something already. We're going to talk about uh, I like talking about electric heat strips. Today, along with my hot coffee, uh, I have brought in a heat kit from my garage. I have a couple I had uh, saved for demonstration and scavenge and parts off of for other stuff. But uh, so let's look at one here. This is the the uh, a complete hit heat kit that I pulled out of an old unit, not too old, and uh, just for demonstration purposes. This is normally this would be set inside the housing, and the uh, the safety disconnects would be mounted mounted up like so or something here. This is a uh, nice good example of, of a lot of the stuff we want to talk about. This is um, a 15 kilowatt heat package, uh, 5, 10, 15, and they have a 60, 60 amp and a 30 amp breakers. The 60 on this one is bad, um, not that that matters. But anyway, so we have we have two strips hooked up on the 60. And we have a single strip hooked up on the 30. Each strip, uh, in this case, they're 5 kilowatts a piece, pulls about 20 amps, give or take a little bit. Um, the, the devices that you're looking at here, uh, we have power coming in through the coils and coming back out. These are actual uh, over-temperature safeties, if you will, or thermal safeties. And should they say the blower's not working, or you have an insufficient amount of airflow or a clogged up filter and it gets too hot in the heat exchanger, uh, heat chamber in this case, uh, one or more of these little suckers will pop off. Uh, cutting the flow of electricity between here and here and thereby taking that coil out of the loop. And you can see the, let me pan around the back here, the coils that you have here set up on this. It just has one coil coming out and it goes through the little S loops just like uh, it looks very similar to ones you'd see on a portable heater, just on a much larger scale. Now some, um, not on this particular one, but on some models, you'll see this a lot on fur down units and older units, they will have in between the coil here and where it ties here, they'll have a little thermal link. And it'll look like a wire and it'll look like a little, a little silver tube. I don't have one out here with me. And it's set to pop at, uh, oh, whatever it's rated at, 150, 180, 215, 220 degrees, and it will short out, um, or I should say open up, not short, it'll open, and that line will not go. So sometimes you'll go out on a heat call, and you'll think the strip is bad, but it's not actually a break in the strip. The link is bad because the evaporator coil, especially on those fur down units, gets real clogged up, and uh, or someone didn't change the filter, and it's really clogged up, and it just it can't disperse the heat in time. So that's that back back around over to here uh, so we have the safety devices here uh, ceramic insulators to protect everything from the actual housing here and here we have uh, we have the heat sequencers now, a lot of people don't like these I'm not overly fond of them but they're you know there they are what they are basically it is uh, you have the 24 volt coil here and here and uh, this one's looped over and tied to the 20 volt coil here and here this is all uh, a single plug-in module, but so when you have a call for heat, either uh, if it's calling for both, it'll heat up the coil in here and in here, and has a little oval disc in here, kind of a semicircle disc, concave disc. That uh, and there's two in this one, and when it heats up the disc enough, it pops the other direction and allows 240 volts to flow through, coming from the uh, coming from down here, flow through here, go through the breaker, heat up the coils and return back to L2 from the other side. And the same down here. Um, this one also would have, uh, uh, in this case, the, the purple is probably going to the fan, which would be tied to the blower motor as well. So you can have uh, a timed on and timed off heat along with the fan as well. So that's the basic of the heat strip on this one. And as soon as I can come up a few more parts, I will show you a few other things. But anyway, there you are. Pretty straightforward. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or uh, I forgot to mention something, 
uh, go ahead and give me a holler. And typically, typically these are not breakers, by the way. Well, most of the times they're just service disconnects. So, uh, just to let you know. Okay, so let's go ahead and I said I was done, but let's go ahead and do some basic troubleshooting on this. Um, this thing here. If you have what what could go wrong on a heat on electric heat? Electric heat is typically pretty straightforward. Um, there are a number of things that could go wrong. The most obvious, especially on older systems, is you get corrosion that builds up on the connectors or inside the wire edges, and the amp load will just get higher and higher until it melts the wire off. So a lot of times I'll go out and nothing's coming on, or maybe the blower's coming on, but they're only getting kind of lukewarm air. You'll find wires that are burned off, cut everything off, and you can clean the wires up, put them back. Sometimes the actual coil element's bad. To test for that, obviously, uh, you would you would pull out your connector here, so I can get this one off here without breaking it. I'd pull that off there, in this case, with the disconnect shut off, obviously. And I'd pull this off here, and I would check for continuity between here and here. If I uh, have continuity between there and there, you know that's not an issue with that. Uh, you can check if you don't have continuity, you could pop this one off here, and uh, or you don't even have to pop that off. Check for continuity between here and here. So if you have, uh, you can check from here to here. If you have continuity, you're, you're good shape all together. If you don't have continuity from here to here, check from here to here next to see if you have, if, if the actual, if this, assuming the thing's cooled down, that the actual uh, thermal safety is good. You can check from here to here. And if that's the case, you know, some of these, like I said, may have, may have uh, those little thermal trips in there that, that go bad, but this particular one doesn't. So at this point, you know, if you checked all that, the next thing would be to pull the heat kit to see if the, the coil is actually bad or if it has a, a fuse link in there that has gone bad. So that's a um, pretty straightforward way to check that. The, um, what else could be wrong? The, another thing you have a lot of time are these stupid little heat sequencers that go bad. So if you fire a system up, and it may be running, but you don't have adequate heat, uh, you, may have, you may have one sequencer that's working and the other one's not. Or you may have half of the sequencer that's working. So if you got the system running, let it run a couple of minutes, there's, there's two different ones. One of these is going to be typically 1 to 30 seconds on and then 30 to 90 seconds or 30 to 120 seconds off. Meaning when you first cut on the heat, <clears throat> 24 volts goes to here. It takes 1 to 30 seconds for, to heat up the disks before it pops and passes 240 volts. And conversely, when you, or inversely, when you uh, cut the heat off, even though the 24 volts dropped, it has yet to cool down. So it takes 30 to a minute and a half to cool down or two minutes to cool down before it pops back the other way. So sometimes you'll come in and, and you let it run a couple minutes and, and I reach in carefully and check my voltage. I have 24 volts across the coil and 24 volts across that coil. So I know I'm getting 24 volts, which means I should be passing voltage. All my wires look okay. Nothing's melted. Uh, so that's typically the first thing I'll check. Do I have do I have voltage across here? If I have a voltage reading uh, from say here to here on my hot, while I have a call in the coil, if I get 240 volt reading, or uh, as, as the case may be, then I know it's not popped. And uh, if, if I get zero, then I know it's passing voltage. You know, check all of them, I have zero passing voltage, then I need to know I'll go to the next step. Okay, where's, where's the break in the loop? Somewhere there's a break in the loop. But these go bad quite frequently and I've changed a bazillions of those. But uh, typically you'll have one that's, like I said, 1 to 30 on, and the other one will be 30 to 60 on, or, or 60 to 90 on, or something like that. So make sure you read the, typically they're marked right on the front. You just have to get your glasses out, and they're marked uh, uh, the on time. The off time is not quite as, as important. Just make sure you get the, if it's, it's supposed to be coming on first or second, and replace them uh, that way. So anyway, that's a couple more ideas on, on troubleshooting for, uh, for electrical heat problems. Electrical heat's kind of fun as long as you don't get into anything weird, but uh, typically it's pretty, pretty straightforward.